Hi everyone, it's been a minute and I have not been ignoring your messages. I am planning on making lots of videos about my process applying to working in Switzerland, about the differences there, about on course. I've got lots of videos planned. Um, it's just been a bit difficult these last few weeks. I think it's been a month uh, since the last video, mostly for two reasons. One, I have changed rotation and I'm currently, well at least for the last two weeks, I've just been working, coming home, eating and sleeping and that's it. So I've not really had time to, or I've not prioritised making videos. And the second is that I keep pushing back these videos, hoping that I'll have more time to make them better and to improve the quality, to improve the content. And then I end up not doing them because it just takes too much time. So here I am finally making this video, which was supposed to be out a couple of weeks ago for junior doctors. I've just binge watched a couple of YouTube videos of junior doctors um, starting out and taking us through their first day or their first week and how they're finding it. And it feels so nostalgic and I can remember the fear that I had, the feeling of being overwhelmed, of feeling like I didn't know anything. And it feels like yesterday, but also a lot has changed since then. And that's sort of reassuring because, you know, for me and for you, things do get better. You will get used to it. You will have more experience. And the things that seemed really scary, like prescribing your first paracetamol, will seem like child's play afterwards. It definitely gets more manageable with time and it's not a magical process that takes place, you know, it's just practice, practice, practice. But there are some things that you can take into account early and try to look out for that will definitely make the process a whole lot easier. And essentially it's prioritizing the right things, focusing on the right things when you're starting off, when everything seems overwhelming, so that you don't get lost in all of that. And you focus on the things that will actually get you to a healthier work-life balance, that will make your work more efficient, that will make you a better junior doctor in the long run, and make you enjoy the whole process much more and much quicker. So here are three tips that will help you survive and thrive in your first week or month of being an F1. Let's get started. Number one is gonna be look after your patient list. Now this is your gold dust, this is your absolute priority as an F1. A patient list is essentially a paper list or a digitalized list depending on where you're working, but usually it's paper. Um, of all your patients, so the patients that you're responsible for. So this may vary, but typically you'll have the patient details on your list, so the patient's name, the hospital number, the beds, the date of birth. Bed space is very important because um, if you don't know where your patient is, then you can't really do your job. And you'll be surprised how often they get moved around on a ward and in the hospital. There's been many times where we've had to chase around trying to find our patient on the consultant ward round because they've just been moved that morning. So that's really, really important to keep track of. And then you'll have uh, the reason for the admission, some relevant past medical history. You may have a list of problems, so the most relevant things that you need to address or keep in mind. And then there's the bloods, so the most recent bloods um, for that patient. Sometimes in the problems list, you'll have some pending investigations. And then you'll have like a little box, a little section where you can fill in the things that you need to chase for that day or request. So that's roughly the information you'll have for your patient on that list. And it's something that you will be updating either early in the morning or in the evening after you're done with the day or both. And it may seem like it's very time consuming and that it takes you ages to find all that information for each patient, but it's definitely worth it. Your team wants you to be organized. That is essentially your role as the F1. You're meant to gather all the information, so you're collecting information, and then you're organizing it so that whenever the consultant needs info about an x-ray, about a patient's bed location, about the last bloods, if there are any other problems on the list that you need to consider, you're the one that's supposed to have that information. Slowly as your training goes on and even as you become more confident as an F1 and you've mastered this organizational skill, you'll be much more involved in the decision making, you know, in, in thinking of the different investigations you can request for um, different patients. But really the first skill that you need to prioritize and focus on is organization. And nothing says organize more than a proper updated patient list. Tip number two is write it down. All the junior doctors that have recently started will agree with me. There is so much information, especially when you're starting off. The pace of a ward run can be so overwhelming where you have to check the bloods and the observations and listen to what the consultant is hearing on his auscultation and open the patient notes for the next patient. There's so many things going on. You will not be able to remember everything, okay? So don't try and overload your brain because it will not last, it will break. 
um, try and write things down. So when the consultant mentions something to you, something you'll need to chase, don't just try and remember it, write it down. So ideally on your patient list that you've just organized, you've got a section where you can add things that you need to chase for the day. And I'm not just talking about jobs. So those are definitely things you need to write down because that, they'll be what you'll be doing for the rest of the day. So things like asking um, a different specialist team for advice on a patient or requesting a certain investigation. So that's the jobs, definitely write them down. Then also things you need to chase. So it may have been blood from yesterday or cultures or something that you've already requested, but you don't have the result yet. And oftentimes it's very easy to request something and then forget to chase it because you've got so many other things going on. So definitely that's another thing you need to write down. And also something I tend to write down, not on my patient's list, but on a tiny notebook that I have in my pocket at all times, questions that I have. So if there's a topic that I know that I need to brush up on and you know, there's a patient who has a certain condition, like whatever, hepatitis, and I can't really remember what the causes are, what the investigations are, I'll just quickly write it down in my notebook. So I've got a section for me, which are just questions that I want to um, answer or topics that I want to review. And then also questions that I may have about a patient uh, for one of these senior doctors in my team. So maybe it's a day where you don't have a senior led ward round, you're doing your ward round by yourself and there's something that you're not really sure about. Instead of just thinking, oh, maybe when I see my senior doctor, I'll ask them, write it down, whether that be in your notebook, whether that be on your patient's list, just to make sure you don't forget. So just to give you an idea of how I do things, typically when I'm going about my day, I always have my patient list on me and my tiny notebook. So it's really that small, it's very thin. And half of it, I basically fill in with topics that I want to review or questions I have. And then the other half are little notes. So if I learn something on a ward round, um, whether that be about a certain medication interaction or about an investigation for a certain condition or a differential diagnosis I shouldn't miss, I'll just quickly write that down in my notebook. And that's great for learning as well because you can go back to it later and review and then maybe look into that topic further. And then on my patient list on one side, so outside of the margins, I'll typically, if I have any questions about a patient, that's where I'll write them in a different colour so I make sure I don't forget to ask whoever, like the consultants. And then on the other side where you usually have a blank space next to each patient, I'll fill in uh, the jobs list and things I need to chase. And you've probably already seen this, but basically next to each thing, I'll put a little square. If it's empty, it's I haven't done it yet. If I've requested it, but I don't have it returned, then I'll just put a diagonal line in it. And if it's something that's like half done, but not fully, like I don't have all the results, I'll fill in one of those um, halves of the circle. And then if it's done, then I'll completely fill it in. And that's a really helpful visual way to keep track of the things that you need to do during the day. Just a side point, don't forget that I have lots of videos on this channel to help you through your journey as a doctor. Whether that be taking you through my own call and typical cases that you'll see in different departments, or how to prescribe basic medication to get you started, tips and tricks to learn on the wards and to survive and thrive as an F1. So make sure you check those out if you're interested. Now back to the video. My third tip is prioritize. Now this is a difficult one because with time you get better at it, but it's something that you can actively work on. And the reason why it's so important is, like I said in the first point, there is so much information that is bombarded at you, you know, from all directions when you're a junior doctor, especially when you're starting off. And it can get very overwhelming. But hopefully, if you have an updated patient list that keeps you organised and you write things down, the next step is, once you've written it down, to prioritise. And like I said, this comes with experience, but there is a logic to it. So you can start straight away in your first week as an F1. The main things that you want to do in the morning first, before you do anything else, before you do your discharge letters, is prescribe anything that needs urgent prescribing, whether that be starting a patient on IV antibiotics or starting an important treatment. You will start that first because that's what's going to impact your patient the quickest. The next step is requesting your investigations. So that can be things like uh, bloods or um, x-rays or scans, whatever it may be. That takes a while to be planned out in the day. So if you request that at I don't know, 3 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon, it's probably not gonna happen that day unless it's really urgent. And if it was urgent, you should have asked it in the morning. So definitely make sure you request those as early as possible in the morning. It will be much better for you and you'll have less things to chase because every time you need to get something done and it's not happening because it's too late or whatever other reason, 
you're having to waste time chasing that investigation. Whereas if you book it in early, you know it's gonna be programmed in the day and you won't have to worry about it. Next thing that I typically prioritize, and we're talking about um, early afternoon-ish right now, or mid-afternoon, you've eaten, you've done your ward round, you've prescribed the medication, you've requested the investigation. That's when I start calling different specialties if I need any advice on patients. I do this typically not too late in the afternoon because people are busy and they've got a million things to do. And if I call them at 4.45 p.m., they're not gonna be very happy. They're unlikely to be very helpful and it's just not great practice. So try and get those in as early as you can. It's not the last 15 minutes rush of the day. That's just a bad time to do it. And then once I'm done with all of those, then typically I'll start doing any discharge letters that I have maybe prepping them for the next day so that in the morning, if you've got patients leaving, you're not having to rush around on your ward round, prescribing medications and preparing your discharge letters and TTOs. So do those the night before if you can. If you've got some that are late, then maybe start doing them as well. And the last thing that I'll do is update my list for the next day. So things like if your patient's bed has been moved, updating the latest bloods, putting in the results from your latest investigations that you've requested, so that way, when you come in the morning, you've got pretty much everything set, unless there's, you know, a blood test that you've requested for that morning, and you're much more settled, ready to take on the next ward round. So there we are. Those are some of my top tips to survive and ace your first week or first month as an F1. I know it's overwhelming, and these tips are not going to make that go away, but they are 100% things that will make your life easier if you try and prioritise them. It's not going to be perfect. Your list is not always going to be up to date and you won't always prioritize the right way, but you will learn with time. And as long as you keep an eye out for those things, you're focusing on the right stuff. You're focusing on the things that will matter, the things that will make you a better F1, that will make you be appreciated by your team more, and you'll just generally be able to enjoy the experience better and focus more on the training and educational side of things because you're organized. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.